Hello, and welcome to the Reclaimed Ranch. My name is Tara, and this is my sidekick, Fawn. She accompanies me wherever I go. So on my channel, what I do is I do DIYs, upcycle thrifted items. Um, I go to yard sales, estate sales, and find different furniture pieces that people no longer need or want, and I refinish them for my booth for resale. So I hope this is something that you're interested in, and you can join me on my journey in making things beautiful again. On today's video, we have a couple of thrifted items that were kind of bland, and so I turned them into something a little bit more interesting to look at. I hope you enjoy. We'll see you there. Okay, so for project number one, we will be using this little planter that I found at a thrift store. And this is the IOD mold called Toad's Jewel. And I will also be using the IOD air dry clay. And so it's a very plain little planter, but we're going to give it some more visual interest. And I'm also going to have my cornstarch and my masking tape nearby. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my cornstarch and I'm going to apply it to all the little molds that I want to have on this planter. And I make sure to dust it really good in all of them. And that way it'll help release the, the IOD clay a lot easier. It won't get stuck in the mold. Another tip you can do is um, when you're done placing the clay in the mold, you can put it in the freezer for about 10 minutes and that'll help release the clay real easy. You can also use uh, resin instead of clay, but because my planter is round, the clay will mold a lot easier to that round surface. And then once I'm done, I will put over and tap out the excess cornstarch. And this IOD air dry clay is the best that I've ever used. It's very pliable, um, very smooth texture. And the first thing I like to do is kind of roll it between my hands and get it nice and workable. And then I'm going to put it inside the mold. These molds all have a micro rim around each mushroom. Room. And so what you do is you just push the clay into the mold and then you just take your finger and rub off across that micro rim to get the excess clay. And then it'll give you a nice crisp um, mold to use. And then when you're done using your clay, what you want to do is take a baby wipe and wrap it around the package and then put it in a Ziploc bag to prevent it from drying out. So I'm going to continue this process for each of the mushrooms that I want to use. And then I use the gravity to help release the molds. And you can see there that it has a nice crisp line and are they are very, very detailed, very pretty. So what I like to use is this tight bond, quick and thick multi-surface glue. So again, just gently patting each and every one to glue on there and it'll dry nicely. Sometimes you can get cracks in it, but that just kind of adds to the character. And then I tape everything on.
this is the next day and everything has dried nicely to the planter. And so now is the fun part where we get to paint. So this is DIY faded burlap. I love this paint because it's a clay paint. It's all natural ingredients since there's no VOCs. Um, the thing with this though is because it's all natural, you want to make sure to put in a different container when you're painting. That, that way you're not contaminating what's inside of the original package. And so I'm going to go ahead and take this planter and put a couple of coats of this faded burlap over the entire thing. And due to video purposes, I'm going to use a heat dryer or a heat gun to help dry in between coats. But this DIY painting is so pigmented, it usually just takes one to one and a half, sometimes two coats. So this is DIY Gypsy Green, and I'm going to take just a little bit, put it in the container, and then I'm going to kind of water it down with my sprayer, and then um, it'll act like a, a watercolor for the mushrooms. And then this is where you can get as creative as you want. You can use lots of colors, or I like to use like the earth tone neutral tool colors for mushrooms. So I'm gonna start with adding the green to where I think it should go on the mushroom. And you can see, see how pigmented it is. It's very, very dark at first, but then I'm going to take a baby wipe and lightly pat on it and blend it until it's more muted. I'll we'll show you that here in just a second. You can see that it's just nicely blended into that faded burlap color. So I'll continue this on around the whole thing, and then I'm going to use Dark and Decrepit from DIY. This is a liquid patina, or you can also use it as a glaze, um, or even a top coat. It's a beautiful brown color. And what I like to do is use it to get into all the little details and then help bring out those colors. So you just paint it on like normal paint and then you can distress it back or you can leave it however you want. Um, the more layers you put on, the darker it will get. And at first I used a shop towel to try and distress it back but it didn't seem to work as much as I wanted it to. So here I am gonna go with the shop towel, kind of wipe it back and it's still pretty dark. I wanted it to be a little bit more faded. So then I tried to add water to the shop towel here and see if that would bring it back a little bit more. And it wasn't as much as I thought. So I ended up grabbing that baby wipe and it was able to pull off some of the, the darker color and bring back more of the lighter undertones and details. It was easier to blend that way as well. So again, I will go around and do that to all the mushrooms where I feel I wanted more brown tones. And you can see how blended and, and nice it looks. So here I am all done. And I'll show you the entire planter here. Just gives it a lot more visual interest when you add something to the planter. I'm going to use the heat gun again for video purposes, but it's actually a little better to just leave it sit and dry on its own. And then for the final coat, I'm going to use Big Top from DIY. It's a top coat and I'm going over really lightly because with that DIY paint, you have to seal it in order for it to be permanent. And like I said, it's water-based. So if you push too hard, it can actually reactivate that, that clay-based paint in, and take it off. So 
I'm just lightly feathering the top coat over the entire planter, getting into all those little crevices and details from the mushrooms. So it looks a little splotchy right now, but as soon as it dries completely, it'll be beautiful fall. And you'll see that here in just a second. Okay, so for this next project, I got this little toolbox at an antique store and it actually had um, a sander, craftsman sander inside of it, but I only got it for like $3 and I wanted it just for the box. So it was kind of a bonus that it had an electrical sander that actually works. So what I'm doing is just kind of taking my little scraper and getting any of the high spots off, any of the extra different paint colors and things like that. And then what I'll do is I will just take a baby wipe and wipe it down really good inside and out. I'm just gonna speed up that process so I don't bore you. So I dried it off completely with my little heat gun and then it was time to paint and I'm using DIY's um, Farm Fresh. It's a beautiful blue green color and I'm using the new DIY paintbrush and I believe this one is called the Little Dipper. It's great for using for smaller projects and you'll see here the bristles are so soft and very flexible and it just makes painting super easy makes it glide right on to your project um, with the new paint brushes you will expect to have a couple of the bristles come out but they are very high quality paint brushes and again i like to pour my paint into a different container so I don't contaminate the rest in the original container. And here you can see how it just glides right on. Of course, it's a metal surface, which makes it pretty easy, but even in porous surfaces, it, it works really well. Here you can see me picking off some of those bristles that have come out. And I'm going to speed this process up in just a sec and let you listen to some music while we get two coats on this and um, drying in between. And with the DIY paint, you can always tell when it's dry because it will be a lighter color. But then once again, when you seal it, it will return to its normal color. So you'll start to see lighter patches and that's when you know that it's dry. Here you can begin to see that it's turning that light color again.
Okay, so now I'm going to take a little piece of sandpaper, 220 sandpaper, and just smooth out any of the bigger bumps from the paint and kind of distress the corners, edges, that little lock plate on the front, um, dry it off. And then now we're going to go ahead and add the word seeds on top. So this will be for some garden seeds. Again, this is IOD stamp called Typesetting. And I wish I could be a stockist for IOD, but I applied and there's already a stockist in my area, which is actually who I use to buy all my products. So I will go ahead and link her information in the description below. And I'm also going to use IOD Black Ink because their ink is, is permanent and it just it sets very well. And their ink pads come um, without any ink in them. You ink them yourself. And that way you can make your own colors as well. So I'm just going to add a little bit because I've been using this pad for a while. And so I'm going to put the letters onto what's called a thin mount. Um, it's just a thin piece of plastic with the grid lines on it to make it easier to kind of center your word and make sure that everything looks nice and neat. So I'm just going to place it on the box where I think I would want the word. I usually just eyeball things. I never get the ruler out. Some people prefer to do that, but I'm just kind of a wing it type of crafter. So I like to just eyeball it and say it's good enough. I'm just trying to make enough room to leave for that extra E and S at the end. And then I'll take that thin mount and place it on top of these letters. And that way, when I go to put it back on, it's already in place. And then I'll just flip it over and I'll add some ink to it. Um, with this project, you don't need a whole lot of ink on these letters. Um, but if you're doing something with fabric, you do want to make sure you have a nice saturated uh, stamp done. Like, make sure it's very saturated. That way it can go through with the fabric. I'm just going to line it back up where I think I want it. And then I'm going to press it down with one hand and hold on to it while I use my other hand to work the stamp down. You want to make sure to hold on to at least one part of it. That way it won't slide and smear on you. And because I'm holding it with one hand, I can lift up to see if I've missed any areas. And I did on the D and E, so I went back and just kind of pressed down a little bit more and was able to make that stamp complete. And then you just want to lift off, and then you're done. And I always use a baby wipe right after just to wipe the ink off so it doesn't stain the stamps. And it does have a distressed look. These, these letters do have distressing in them. But I did miss a couple spots you can see there in the S and E, but I actually love the way that looks. So usually when I'm done with all of my stamping, I go back and sand and distress anyway, so less for me to do. And I'm going to seal it with the DIY Big Top again. And I'll just kind of feather over the word just to make sure it doesn't smudge. But usually this IOD ink is really good about being permanent, so... I like to use the sponge brushes for um, sealing because if you use your nice brushes, it's kind of, you want to either wash them immediately or um, use a brush that you don't really care about because sometimes I forget about it and then it sits out and then it hardens and then you can't get it out. So I've ruined a couple of brushes that way. So these foam brushes are pretty inexpensive at Walmart or the Dollar Tree. Um, you can get those and... It just makes for less brush strokes even. So it's kind of nice. 
I'm just going to give it one good coat and then let it dry and you'll see the end result. I want to thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch my video. I hope it brought you some inspiration as well to do a DIY craft of your own. Um, if you have any questions, go ahead and leave a comment below and let me know which one was your favorite out of these two. And I will be doing some new ones real soon. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.